most more recently, uh, I've become very interested in art, especially in Indian art, because I am from India. And I've tried to understand uh, how the brain responds to art. And you begin with a simple question, are there artistic universals? In other words, despite the staggering diversity of artistic styles, you know, there is uh, Indian art, there's Tibetan art, there is uh, Impressionism, there's Expressionism, there's Cubism, there is uh, ma there are many different types of art. But despite this diversity, could there be some underlying deep structure, common principles, universal principles, similar to Chomsky and deep structure for language, for example? Okay. Now, so what, what I did was to begin with a principle called peak shift, which is, you see this in rats. If you have a rat and you teach it to distinguish a square from a rectangle and you give it a piece of cheese for the rectangle, it soon learns that the rectangle is, is good. But then now if you give it a longer and skinnier rectangle, a new one, the rat prefers that to the original rectangle. Now this might seem stupid, but it isn't, because what the rat has learned is a rule, rectangularity, and it responds to that. Okay? And you can see that artists also exploit this. For example, um, if you want a caricature of a face, what you do is you take, say, Nixon's face, subtract the average male face from Nixon's face, and that tells you what's special, the big nose, the big eyebrows, and then you exaggerate it. And then it looks even more like Nixon than Nixon. Okay, so, so just like the rat responding to the skinnier triangle, you respond to this. Now, Indian, in, in, in Sanskrit, an in ancient Indian language, there is a word called rasa, Rasa is hard to translate, but it means capturing the very essence of something to evoke a specific emotion or mood in the viewer's brain. And that's the definition of art. So I realized if you understand rasa, you understand art. Okay, so what is rasa? Now it's easy to explain caricature and maybe portraiture and that sort of thing. But what if you start talking about abstract art? What about cubism? What about uh, Henry Maugh? Okay, well, I can explain that. To understand this, you have to go look at the work of an ethologist, Miko Timbergen. Timbergen had seagulls, seagull chicks, baby seagulls, begging for food from their mother. Now it turns out they go and peck at the mother's beak, and the mother then regurgitates food, and the chick swallows it. Now mother's beak is actually a long brown thing, with a sort of yellowish thing with a red spot on it. Now Timbergen asked, how does the chick recognize the mother? Well, it turns out you don't need the mother. You can remove the mother and just wave the disembodied beak in front of the chick. It'll think you're the mother and start pecking at the beak. Now, this might seem stupid. How come it mistakes a human being for a, for, a, for a mother? Again, it's not stupid because the goal of vision is to economize on information processing, do as little as you need to do to get the job done. And it knows that in nature, the only time it'll see a long thing with a yellow spot is when there's mom around. It's never going to see a mutant pig with a beak or, or an ethologist waving a beak. So it takes advantage of this, and it simplified it, and it just likes this thing with the spot, okay? But now comes the exciting part. What Timbergen found was you don't even need a beak. You can take a long piece of cardboard, put a red spot, wave it in front. It'll still beg for food. This is because the way the chick's visual system is wired up, there are neurons in the tectum, hyperstratum, other parts of the visual pathways. They have certain uh, tolerance limits for what detecting a beak, and it's pretty crude because it doesn't need to be very sophisticated. So now if you present the stick with a red spot, then the neuron fires and the chick is full. That's a visual illusion. But even better, if you have a long, thin stick with three red stripes, which looks nothing like a beak, the chick goes crazy. And they all are attracted to it like a magnet and start pecking like crazy. This is because, again, Timbergen doesn't say why, but he's discovered a super beak. The reason is this long thing and the three red stripes hyperactivates those neurons because of the way the receptor field is configured of the neuron. In other words, the neuron may have a rule, more red outline, the better. So if you put three stripes, it fires even more, even though it doesn't look like a beak. Now that's my punchline about art, and that is, if the gulls had an art gallery, they would hang this long, thin stick with the three red stripes on the wall, they'd worship it, pay millions of dollars, call it a Picasso, but not understand why. They would say, my God, it doesn't look like anything, why am I riveted to it? So I claim, Artists like Picasso, uh, Rodin, um, more especially Henry Moore, what they're doing is they've discovered the form primitives of human vision through intuition or trial and error. They've discovered the equivalent of the long stick of the three, with the three red stripes for the human brain. And that's why you're mesmerized. That's why you pay so much money. Now, this is 
very different from what's often called evolutionary psychology. Okay? The reason it's different is the response is not necessarily adaptive. Okay? I mean, why, the six response to the long thing with the three red stripes is not necessarily adaptive. The way the neuron is wired up may be adaptive for some other reason. It simplifies processing. But the stimulus you're giving it is the chick's behavior is not adaptive, but it still works. This is the first explanation anybody's given for abstract art, for cubism, Henry Moore, and that sort of thing. Okay? People have suggested that art involves hyperbole, exaggeration. That's not new, although it's not widely known. Uh, what's new here is that the manner in which you distort the stimulus often bears no relationship to the stimulus, or no obvious relationship to the stimulus, because of the way the neurons are wired up. And there are certain fish, for example, you can show a blue thing in front of it, it goes crazy, even though there is nothing that would lead you to expect that. And that, that, that's what's going on in art. 